I am uh, sick and tired of hearing about your the the Richard Potato the you know <laughs> the fucking idiot up north who runs your fucking country uh, the Trudy Taint Licker yeah, just, the illegitimate I, son of Castro unjabbed yeah. called it Trudy Taint Licker <laughs> now, what I don't understand is why the fuck are you I mean Canada has several provinces that just want to leave Canada yeah. Why are they fucking still together? Why haven't they tried to join the United States yet? Well, uh, I'll make it as fast as possible. And this is Skid's, you know, little analysis here. The biggest divides that we find, I think, are kind of the same as down there. It's not, it's not necessarily rich, poor, black, white, east, west, north, south, whatever. It's rural, urban. And so the people who live in the cities... There's many, many more of them. They get to dictate policy to all the rest of us who are living out in the country. Or dictate. And so, yeah. you know, this this gun legislation is a perfect example of it. And then to further on answer your question, it's <clears> like, you know, the province I come from in Alberta is mostly rural. You know, so it's got that rural way of looking at things. We'll solve the problems ourselves. Just get out of our way and make it happen. But the people in the city, especially for the past three generations, they want the government to solve everything for them. And that's what they yep. keep voting. Yeah. So... When, uh, you know, when you start tallying up the votes across Canada for stuff, by the time they've tallied up Toronto, which is way over in the east, it's done. So it doesn't even matter what we vote here. And that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, yeah. you're a flyover state and they ignore you. Yep. That's about as good a way to put it. Yeah. You need to get the fuck out of there, man. You know, there's a word for people who want the government. Well, actually, there's two words for people who want the government to step in and do everything for them. Lazy and, weak. and stupid. And weak. and weak. Okay, That's well, three. the magic three. Things always Lazy, come in threes. stupid, and weak. Things always come in threes. Just ask your ex. But in- oh. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. 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 Yeah. And that's when she's done. You're going to get me sued, bro. <laughs> I said ex. I did not say ex. Patriated, withdrawn, indignant, fornicator, entertainer. Okay. It's an acronym for you people out there who've been watching since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got to memorize that one. That one's pretty good. You wrote that <laughs> one. I know. I, Why I, is it I remember this shit? It came out of your thinking meat. Uh, my thinking meat's broken. Uh, okay. It takes a little effort to remember stuff. You gotta, you gotta drain it out a little bit so you can fill it up with new stuff, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's why I carried the brain around. That's what getting older is like. It sucks. Well, I, you know <clears throat> that, and you know. The TBI and all that other shit. It's not good for you. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, so just a quick overview here. Canada's government is introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on the sale and purchase of handguns as part of a gun control package that would also limit magazine capacities and ban some toys that look like guns. And it resurrects some measures that were shelved last year amid a national election, which I'm sure Justin Trudeau won totally fair and by the books. Uh, uh, and comes just a week after the Uvalde massacre. So, oh, we need these new measures as gun violence is increasing. Well, it could have something to do with the fact that you're allowing fentanyl and other things like that out there, and you have virtually no crime and punishment for real crimes. That's right. But uh, <clears throat> you were mentioning this earlier, Skid. What exactly is the process for even attempting to get a handgun in Canada? All right. So as a handgun owner myself, I can tell you the first thing you need is a uh, possession and acquisition license. So that's a little card that lets you even buy a weapon to start with. And there's two uh, sorts of it. There's for unrestricted and restricted. Unrestricted is basically any long gun or shotgun. And restricted is for handgun type stuff. And even so, there's another category called prohibited. So you can't even have a handgun with a barrel less than six inches a real six inches uh-huh. because that's a that's a that's a prohibited weapon you're not even allowed to have that around at all that's so if you want a handgun the first thing you need is to get what they call that pal that position and acquisition license which requires uh a course an extra course if you're getting the restricted stuff and then an rcmp which is our national police force uh check on you uh-huh. so when that comes back and you get that which takes a little while then you can go to your gun store or to a gun uh, a gun convention, whatever, and look to pick up the uh, the handgun. However, uh, when you start initiate the uh, purchase of that handgun, 
you can't take it anywhere yet because in order to transport the handgun in Canada, you need what's called an ATT, an authority to transport. And the authority to transport gives you the authority to take the handgun from where it is now to where you want it to be. Now, in the easiest possible case, you're at home with the handgun, you want to take it to the range. Uh -huh. Okay, you would <clears throat> have your ATT say, you can take your handgun to any range in Alberta, say. Okay, so if the police pull you over and go, why do you have this handgun here? Oh, because my ATT says I'm going to the range. Okay, but here was your, your town and here was your range. What were you doing over there? Problem. You're supposed to take a direct route to where you're going as described by the ATT, and I'm not even kind of oh kidding. Oh, my God. So, God damn. So, no, well, wait for it. Wait for it. And so <laughs> now you, you picked up, you bought the gun at the store. You need an ATT to take the gun from the store to your house. So you have to arrange that, and it doesn't really take that long, maybe a day or so. You get the ATT, they're emailed to you or whatever. Now you can actually pick up the gun and take it home. Okay, great. Uh, now, in order to keep it legal though, because the only reason to have a handgun in Canada is to do target shooting, uh -huh. you must belong to a target range. You are not legally allowed to own a handgun in Canada unless you belong to a certified range. A gun club. I'm not. Yep. So the, the, you've got the, that sorted out. You've got you've got your ATT sorted out. You're at home now. How do you store it though? Oh. Must be stored with a trigger lock in a locked cabinet behind locked doors, and the ammunition must be in a separate place, locked differently. That, my friends, is what it takes to have a handgun in Canada. But you're right. We need more legislation on this because clearly the problem is the legal handgun owners. What Whoa. the absolute flying fornication trophy. And you know, you know what? This is very similar wow. to what they did in, uh, I believe, Germany before Hitler yeah. took possession. They passed a bunch of laws where you had to be a yep. member of a gun club and go through the whole deal. And then they drop the hammer and they take all the guns. Because oh, yeah. they're stored at these yeah. central locations, these gun clubs. And you can't get to them fast enough to no. defend yourself. That's correct. Yeah. When these people say, that, oh, we need common sense gun control legislation. Yeah, this because, is not common sense. This is insane. Is this is insane. It's, it's, gun crime is so horrible. The guns are the problem. Wait, no, what they really want, like they want the criminals to have guns and the government to have guns. But I repeat myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, and then so it goes a little even further beyond that, too. So your gun stored the way I've just described pretty hard to get to in a home break-in. A little bit. All right. Now, you guys have some laws, state to state it varies, where if someone breaks into your home, you can deal with them as appropriately. Castle Correct. You can't, you can't do that here. If you pull out your gun and shoot somebody who's in your home, if you can't demonstrate proportional force, in, in other words, that he had a gun too, you're going to jail. Wow. That so, is fucking insane. That's Listen. why I keep things like baseball bats, drywall hammers, and knives around because I have to use proportional force even though I want to defend my daughters. Get a samurai sword. That is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. I mean, yeah. we should, Canada, U.S., doesn't matter. Every country should have nationwide constitutional carry, nationwide castle doctrine. Correct. Because anyone who breaks into your home while you are there means to do you harm. Correct. Correct. Yes. And, and here's another Correct. thing. Um, I would like to see it expanded here in the United States so you ha can use a firearm to protect your property yeah. and your livelihood. All right? Because That's Castle Doctrine. All of this craziness that took place in the past couple of years would have stopped immediately if business owners were had a you know, if every business owner owner was in his shop with a twelve gauge. Oh yeah. And somebody throws something through the window. Boom, you're done. Yeah, you we, come yeah. through the door, you want to do stupid shit, mm -hmm. boom, you're done. It only takes a few times, and people will fucking stop. Yep. Well, at, at the end of the day, the, the bottom line is there is no distinguishing between the criminal element and the legal element. I've just described this entire process to you. Like, any legal gun handgun owner in Canada is one of the most law-abiding, rigorous, administratively straight and narrow citizens you will ever meet. Uh -huh. They're not committing the crimes. The crimes are all being done with illegal handguns. And they'll go, oh, well, those are stolen out of people's houses. No, they're not. They're coming across the border from the states. Yeah, because Dare the I say it? Across... 
through Indian <laughs> reservations who spanned the border. Oh, I'm not supposed oh. to say that. Oh, 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 oh sorry about that. Oh, oh sorry. so yeah, insensitive. Oh. Are you talking about the indigenous are uh, are basically yes. smuggling weapons into Canada? Mm. Uh, allegedly. allegedly. Allegedly, yes. Yeah. Wow. Get smoked. But you are completely 1,000% correct, and the studies bear it out. Let's check it out here on the Patriot Post right here. 90% of guns used in crime are obtained illegally. Yep. And yeah. So That's doesn't a bunch. it kind of put that? I mean, when you look at this and then you look at their so called solution to the problem. Uh-huh. What I said starts to come into focus. The government, I mean, like Joe Biden, you know, goes on goes on a tangent today about how a nine millimeter bullet blows the lung. Or I'm sorry, I should be a nine millimeter bullet blows the <laughs> lung out of the body. Mm. That guy's a fucking idiot. Now, I- and yet the entire time that he's down in Uvalde, you know, standing on the corpses of these dead children yep. to make his political points, right? Mm-hmm. He is surrounded. By nine millimeter weapons, plus a whole bunch of other shit we probably don't even have available to the public yet. Listen, I've fired all kinds of guns, probably close to a million rounds in 33 years. I've fired a lot of nine millimeters at all different types of targets. And yes, if you are hit in the chest cavity with a nine millimeter with a hollow point, Hollow point. Mm. It will make a small hole going in, and it'll expand probably six times its size coming out. And everything in its path will get ripped out of it. But very rarely are you going to have whole organs sucked out of the fucking hole. It shreds the organs in the cavity. Isn't that what we call uh, stopping power? Isn't that the yep. entire reason behind the great equalizer? That's absolutely correct. So and how can we be shocked and now try to use it as a reason to impede and infringe, which shall not be infringed, correct. our God-given Second Amendment rights? Yeah, I know. I, I, you're, you're preaching to the choir here. And here's another thing, too. The military can't use hollow point rounds. It's against the Geneva Convention, so everything's full metal jacket. Yep. I have seen Haji's in Iraq who got hit with our full metal our our ball ammunition from nine millimeter weapons and get up and run away. Yeah. Just and five five right? six too, right? Because that's what you're using for M sixteen. Yeah, the five five six, like for instance, we went and picked up a bad guy at uh you know, what's it, Biop, which is Baghdad International Airport. And we risked our lives to drive out there to get this fucking douche. <laughs> and he had been hit five fucking times with a five five six. Wow. He was literally stitched up with the saw, and he was still walking around. And we had to put this fucker <laughs> in the back of the truck and drive him to Abu to the Whitme Spank Me camp. Wow. I, I wow. was just like, I, I looked over at my dude. I'm like, God, I love. I used to love the saw. But goddamn, this five five six shit, especially the the steel core penetrators, they mm. just it's like getting shot with a bunch of knitting needles. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure it would suck. But you know, yeah. I, I I've read a lot of the um reports, the TTPs from Afghanistan, where they're literally hitting these guys two and three times with five five six beyond five and six hundred meters. And it, 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 they get up and run away. Because at <laughs> that range, it's kind of like getting hit with an overpowered pellet gun. Wow. So I, I fully understand why the Army is going to a new round. And uh, I think it's a mistake. I think they should go back to the 308. But, hey, what what the fuck do I know? I'm just an 11 Bravo, 18 Bravo Green Beret who's been around the block a few times. Uh, it's not like you saw two wars or anything. or Three wars, sorry. I was in the Army for three formal wars, and I was almost okay. killed in two. There you go. But, hey, you know, what would you know, right? Yeah, what the I mean, fuck do I know? Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> there's a reason why, you know, this country used to be a hell of a lot better off when it was veterans like yourself primarily running Congress. Now you got a bunch of bureaucrat fuckballs. <clears throat> You no, know, no, doctors, yeah. lawyers, city managers, shit like that. I mean, come on. Now, I'm going to be honest. Like, my heart goes out to the families who, who lost children in that school incident. I oh, really amen. Yeah. And sure. 
you know, I, I am not downplaying what happened to those families in any way, shape, or form. It's terrible. But but the problem that we're having with all of this goddamn violence is the people doing this violence are coming from broken fucking homes. Yeah. There's no father in the house because guess what? When a boy gets around 10 or 11, his mother can no longer control him and he goes off the fucking rails. And he, the first thing that he does is he tries to find the closest thing, an approximation to, because he has no father figure, father figure to yeah. an alpha. And that's where these guys find gangs. Uh, MS-13. You, know, you, you got guys finding horrible mentors, taking them down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is this. Gun control and fatherless homes explain virtually every mass shooting that has ever happened on our soil. Correct. Correct. And here's another thing. I am sick and tired of every time like a white person goes off, uh, uh, just snaps, goes fucking mad gunner. It's a fucking national news story. And it's about all white people. Correct. When they find these guys. But if you go to Chicago, which I call Chai Congo, <laughs> those fuckers are shooting each other left and right over stupid fucking shit. 80% of gun-related homicides are drug-related. The yeah. primary customers of hard drugs and drug dealing, they're fatherless children. Yeah, and they're bullet sponges. Yep. Yeah. It, it is fucking heartbreaking. And I'm sick. This drives me fucking crazy. Nobody is addressing it. It's the elephant in the room. But they're like, listen. Well, as soon as you do, they ignore you and, and because you're like, talking sense. People say, hey, guns kill people. Oh, they do. Well, I failed my math exam because the pencil fucking wouldn't do the work. <laughs> like, what the fuck? That's so fucking stupid. It's a fucking tool. Yes. Like, literally, you can go to Home Depot and buy a nail gun that works off of the 22 blanks. That thing will shoot about 40, 40 feet. But if you walk up on people and just to the back of the head, they're done. Yeah. Uh, you can kill people with knives, swords, screwdrivers. Hey, just... Do a search for shanks in prison. These fuckers got fuck all. They got see-through fucking TVs. They have to wear flippers and plastic or, or paper fucking clothes. But somehow, because we're evil hairless monkeys, they figure out how to make these fucking deadly weapons. Yeah, and they can make them out of toothbrushes. And toilet paper rolls. Yeah, and another thing that we were talking about earlier with the, like, the, the burglaries and whatnot... You go to any country that has horrifyingly strict gun control legislation and then compare it to the United States, especially in a Fucking rural area, hole. the hot robberies, which is what they call a robbery when you're at home, skyrocket in heavily gun-controlled regions. Yeah, because they know they can go in there and what you're going to do, fuck all. Yeah, because unless you can you know, respond with proportional force, right, Skid? <laughs> no, I want to yeah. see every fucking American citizen God. have exactly. a 12-gauge... Shotgun in their house with double odd buck. So you come through a window or door in somebody's house and you hear them rack the 12 gauge and you don't leave, you get what you get. Guess what? You're going to get fucking burned down. And a three inch magnum double odd buck fucking round will quite literally rip a man in half at like 10 meters or less. How do I know this? Maybe I saw it. Maybe you saw it. I will, I will agree to pay a little more taxes if every home in this America is required to have a gun. You have like a house gun, and you can even leave it there for the next people when they move into your house. That would be fitting. If there's more guns in this country, guess what? Shit gets <clears throat> a lot more polite, and no one gets their home broken into because, hey, everybody's got a fucking gun. Now, That's what you call a well-regulated militia. Now, I personally don't have firearms in the lair. They were lost in a tragic boating accident. Yes, I, I heard but, all about that. But you have been to my day. house. You literally, you come out of the bathroom. There's a medieval war hammer stuck to the wall. Yep. I have a katana in the corner of the room that I sleep. And I have weapons stuck to walls all over the place. So all I really got to do is I hear a noise. I stand up. I'm like, uh, what is it? Oh. Um, I think we're going to go with uh, Viking Spear. <laughs> and a battle axe and a knife. And I'm coming down there. You better have a gun or you're going to get run through. 
I could just imagine that, like, in a bunch of people, like, storming upstairs, all of a sudden you're just standing at the end of the hall, you have a battle axe in one hand, and you're putting in your mouth guard. All right, so who's first? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do that. I do that. I put the mouth guard in in bars. So the, see, see these dudes are probably high on something. They're scratching themselves. This is 5 o'clock free crack giveaway. And this guy <laughs> this guy just put in a mouth guard, and he's got a fucking sword, Tyrone. He's got a fuck. What are we guy. supposed to do? He's, he's going to fuck, fuck us up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen some of the drywall hammers that you can uh, oh, buy yeah. at the hardware oh, store? Yeah. For yeah, yeah. Now that's a weapon. Get a that's, tomahawk. That's a man. proportional use of force right there. Yeah. Get yeah. a tomahawk. You can just rip its jaw right off. With that thing. Yes. It's impressive. Now, listen, I, and uh, here's another thing that really bothers me is in today's day and age, you have the youth out there, and they've played years and years of Call of Booty. Oh, speaking of which. They don't uh, know shit about actual fighting and violence. Nope. So quite literally, they do stupid shit because they don't understand that there are real world consequences that last forever. Yeah, the the whole uh, you know, real world spawn point or the re the respawn point isn't like it is in video games. No. You don't get to come back with all your armor and weapons. Nope. You you get shat out of the first vaginal turd dispenser, you're gonna, buck naked and screaming your head off, and you're not you anymore. That's why all the babies scream. Yeah. They're like, fuck, I'm doing it again! I'm doing it again! Ah! You know, fuck. I yeah, think I'm, I have all these fucking night terrors as my memories leave my body. I have, I'm a firm believer in that. So when I hang out with like young babies, I'm always like, so what were you in your last life? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, sometimes you get that weird look, and then every once in a while you get the answer. Ah, well, you know, I was a farmer. Watch Grunt's Beak live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you'd like to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, consider making a donation on Locals, Patreon, or Subscribe Star.